Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on correlation in Excel. I have here a fictitious data set in an Excel workbook. I have uh, one column for participants. You can see there are 40 participants. And then four different dependent variables. And let's just say these are scores obtained from tests measuring depressive symptoms, where a higher score indicates more depressive symptoms. So we're going to analyze this using the analysis tool pack in Excel. So if you go to the data tab up top, you can see there's a menu item data analysis over to the right. If you do not see that, just go to File, Options, Add-ins, select Analysis Tool Pack, and down here it says Manage, make sure it says Excel Add-ins, and click Go. And of course you can see mine's already checked, uh, yours would look like that. Just check Analysis Tool Pack and click OK, and this option will be available to you. So let's assume in this scenario that you have an established instrument for depression. And you're either looking for a new instrument to use in your agency or you're designing instruments. And you have three other instruments that you're testing. Test one, test two, and test three. And you want to see how strongly the, the obtained scores from test one, test two, and test three correlate to the established instrument. So you're looking for a test that will correlate uh, positively and strongly if it's going to be suitable to replace the instrument you already have. So you already know the established instrument works. That is, it measures depressive symptoms effectively. It has high reliability and validity. So we'll go to data analysis and first I want to show you uh, covariance. This is a construct that often gets confused with correlation. And there is a function here in the analysis tool pack for covariance. Now what covariance tells us uh, in referring to two or more variables, it tells us about the co-movement between variables, but it is dependent on the unit of measure used in, in this case, the instruments. So these instruments, well, let's cancel out here for a second, these instruments could be completely different in terms of the expected mean, the standard deviation, as well as the expected median and mode. So they're not using the same units of measure. So when you run a covariance, this is how you do it, you go to covariance, click OK, and input range, just highlight everything from cell B1 all the way through E41. We do have labels in the first row. And I'm going to put the, the output range as G2. Click OK. And you can see that since this depends on the unit of measure, this is difficult to interpret. Uh, these values cannot be compared to one another. They're not standardized. So covariance certainly has its purposes and is important. And oftentimes the word covariance and correlation are misused. But the covariance calculation in this instance isn't very useful for us because it's difficult to interpret. We do want to know if the instruments covary together but the way we understand that is by looking at the correlation. So using the same data, 
I'll go back to the analysis tool pack and select correlation and click OK. And the input range will be the same. There are labels in the first row, so I'm going to check that off. And the output range I'm going to select as G8. I'm going to put it below the output for the covariance uh, function. And click OK. So now you have the correlation values. These are standardized. So we can compare uh, this value, for instance, to this value. So it's a lot more interpretable and intuitive. This table, uh, this correlation matrix, is fairly straightforward to read. Now we're interested in how well the tests correlated with the established instrument. So first we'll go to cell H10 here, where we have the correlation between the established instrument and test 1. You can see it's 0.57. So a general rule, I would emphasize general, uh, because it really depends on what kind of data you're looking at uh, to make these to determine these type of rules. The general rule would be a correlation of 0.1 uh, or greater is small, 0.3 or greater is medium, and 0.5 or greater would be large. So 0.57 uh, is a fairly good correlation. Now an assessment, uh, you would want a stronger correlation. If you're going to use this instrument in place of the established instrument, 0.57 would not uh, be strong enough a correlation in, in most cases. However, that is a, a fairly good correlation. If you look at the relationship between the established instrument uh, scores and the scores for test 2, that correlation is less than 0.1. So that would not be a good uh, choice to replace the established instrument. And then for test 3, we have a negative correlation. It's a about a medium size a correlation, negative 0.39. So as the scores for the established instrument increase, so as depressive symptoms occur more frequently or their duration is more severe, or however the instrument's measuring the depressive symptoms, the values for test three actually decrease. There's an inverse relationship between the scores for the established instrument and test three. So this is really what we're interested in right here uh, for the uh, research question that I'm asking of this data. Now the matrix also gives you some other information which may or may not be useful depending on what you're doing. Uh, it gives you a relationship between test 1 and test 2. It's a negative uh, relationship, negative 0 0.09, so fairly small. Test 1, test 3, again negative 0.19. So it's you know medium uh, relationship there. And then the relationship between test 2 and test 3, and that's quite small, at negative 0 0.04. I want to show you another calculation you can perform uh, that again uh, makes this data uh, interpretable uh, in another way. And that's how to calculate the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination tells us how much variance in test one can be explained by movement in the established instrument. That's a, that's a fairly useful statistic and relatively easy to calculate. It's the square of the R value. It's R squared. So in this case, if we start a function, include uh, the value, the correlation between the established instrument and test one, and then shift and the number six, and then two. So we're going to square that. And you can see it's 33%. So 33% of the movement in test one can be explained by the movement in the established instrument. 
That doesn't mean that movement in the established instrument is causing the movement in test one. It just describes the nature of the relationship. So if you extend this function down two more rows, you can see the coefficient of termination between the established instrument and test two is very small. And you'll notice that 15% uh, of the variance in test three can be explained by movement in the established instrument. Notice how this is now positive. Since it's squared, it makes this negative 0.39 uh, positive 0.15. So the coefficient of termination does not tell us the direction. So you have to look at both the correlation and the coefficient of termination to get a better understanding of how these variables are related. I hope this video on correlation was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.